Hello there, welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and I'm your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. And you join me today on a walk through the woodland, a place where I feel most at home and a place where I allow my mind to wander and seek out solutions for the problems that I see and encounter in the world. And also I'm happy to answer any problems which people may send to me and that's my goal here today. I've received a question from somebody who uses the pseudonym of Explorations of Society and he's dropped me a question which says, Hello Ash, I have a question for you of manners and etiquette. How should I treat a person who I know is not a decent human being? What I mean is, what if a person is not a good person and is not doing any good for people or the community? Should I treat them like I treat everybody else or should I treat them in a different way? Well, just put the book down. There's an old saying, is there not? Manners maketh man. And it's as valid a statement today as it always has been. We are judged by others, not just by our appearance, but by the way in which we treat them. And as a chap, which of course is another word for a gentleman, in my parlance, I always endeavour to treat people in the best possible way that I can. However, we know many people who do not exhibit that reciprocal behaviour. We've all encountered the co-worker, all right, who repeatedly is late, who takes the mickey out of us by lumping extra work on us and, you know, clearing off from work early or saying unpleasant things about us behind their back. I'm sure we've all met those and also strangers. You know, how many times have you encountered a, a person who's failed to act in a way which shows good manners and decorum? I'll give you an example. Imagine perhaps you hold the door open for somebody as you see them walking into a building. You clearly are holding the door open to aid their way. However, they don't spare you a second glance. They don't say a word of appreciation. They just flounce straight past as if you have been employed to keep that door held open for them. Those are the sort of people we're talking about today. Now I know what the temptation is when you're in a situation like that where somebody's walked past you and you're holding that door open. You get that sensation. You just, maybe you've done this, where you say, oh, there's no need to thank me in a loud theatrical manner designed so that they can clearly hear you and you hope it will trigger some remorse or some decency in them. However, in many cases, they either just walk off as if they haven't heard you or you might have pushed them into a situation where they feel somehow slighted by your comment and they feel they need to retaliate and then we're often running into a situation of interpersonal conflict which is going to be difficult to resolve. So in my life, and I have met quite a few unpleasant people, I will remind you that I spent 23 years of my working life as a police officer, so believe me, I met many people who did not display good decorum. I've got three ideologies which I employed in my life to help me get along in life with these people who just didn't have good manners. Now my first way of dealing with such situations was to convert the negative energy from that situation into positivity, where you encounter people who are blatantly lacking in manners, who clearly have no decorum. Etiquette is a foreign language to them, and it may be to several of them actually, but all right, they've got no intention of being nice to anybody. How do you deal with that? You take that negativity and you use it as an example to empower you, to propel you to be the polar opposite. People who are disrespectful, who have no manners, who are repeatedly late to work, who leave you to do all the work while they're shirking. Take that negativity and turn it into a strength. Turn it into a column of positivity. Meet the negative energy with the positive. Now I saw this working many times when I was a police officer. You'd go into a situation 
and they would be a situation of conflict. There'd be individuals squaring up to each other and it appeared as if there was about to be physical violence. And you turn up and you start to employ impeccable manners. You res refer to the individuals as sir or madam. You speak in a calm manner. And I've often found that when you're overwhelmingly polite to somebody, it's very difficult to reciprocate in anything other than politeness too. I've seen it so many times. So my suggestion, rather than getting het up inside and feeling like you need to go and grab hold of the person and give them a shake and saying, for God's sake, get some manners and some decorum. Take that feeling that you've got, pull it into your chest and let it motivate you to be a much more positive person yourself and use their example of negativity to propel you to higher levels of being a better person. So the gulf between your behavior and theirs is worlds apart. Now, my second way of dealing with these sort of situations is to employ a little bit of empathy. Now, it's very easy to draw a conclusion quite quickly as to why somebody is repeatedly late, as to why somebody is leaving early, as to why somebody is a little bit short with you in their manners. There's no pleases and thank yous. But I find it's, you know, we, we really don't know. We, unless we walk a mile in the shoes of that person, we don't know what stresses and strains they're under. They may be labouring under an illness, be it mental or physical, that they don't want to share with people for fear of embarrassment. It's causing them worry. They might have a family member who's desperately ill. They might have any number of situations or trauma which has triggered their behaviour. They may have, be late coming to work every day because they've got to care for a loved one. They may have to call in on their elderly mother who's got dementia on their way to work and they don't want to mention it because they're afraid of being treated differently when they're in the workplace. So they would rather you think of them as a shirker, somebody with bad manners, than actually telling you the truth. Employ a little bit of empathy. Find out what the situation is. Many times they won't volunteer it but get to know the person. Use the knowledge that you glean in such a situation to ameliorate the situation. Become a problem solver, not just somebody who calls that individual an arsehole behind their back or maybe even to their face, leading to an unworkable situation wherever you are. I mean, it's difficult when somebody doesn't say thank you when you hold the door open for them, but just let it wash over you. Like I said, in my first ideology, use it as a strength so that when you walk through a door and somebody holds the door open for you, thank them. Make them feel special for taking the time to do so. But also use empathy for those who, who can't be reasoned with. Understand there may be something else that you cannot see which is causing that situation. Take the time to find out and help sort it out. Now, my final way for dealing with such situations of bad manners and repeated poor etiquette from somebody that you know, or maybe even a stranger, is by far the hardest one to deal with. And it does require a strong character and a bit of backbone. And that is to employ brutal honesty. And I say it's the hardest because most human beings, we avoid conflict. However, if you're gonna use brutal honesty, you've got to face the problem. And that involves having a reasonable conversation with the person who's causing the issue. If it's a workmate, a coworker, a friend, an acquaintance whose behavior has changed, have, as I say, it's important, the word I used, a reasonable conversation. This is not raised voices. This is somebody talking on a peer level to another person and pointing out some of the issues. Do you realize that you've been late 10 minutes late every day for the last two weeks. And you know, that's quite annoying for me and the other guys in the workplace. It's painting you in a very poor manner. And I'm sure you don't want that to go on. Is there something I can do to overcome this issue? Is, is there something I need to know? Can I help you? Now, what you're doing there is pointing it out in a very reasonable, mannerable way 
and offering yourself as part of the solution. Now you might say it's brutal honesty because if they're a thick-skinned person or maybe somewhat self-absorbed, it might come as a total surprise to them that anybody would be offended by the fact that they're 10 minutes late every day or that maybe they're a little bit brusque in their manners when they speak to you. When they ask you to do something, it may be a senior, it might be a subordinate that you're having this conversation with. But if you're being reasonable and you're pointing this out to somebody, you're helping them in their life journey. Now the risk here is that it could obviously lead to conflict. If somebody doesn't like what they hear or they don't like being having their faults pointed out to them, they may take a negative approach. Well, from your point of view, if you think about it, there's not much of a gamble going on because if they're being unpleasant or late for work or showing bad manners to you and your associates all of the time, well, what have you got to lose? You know, if, if you're in more conflict with them at the end of it, well, you've been the bigger person. You have spoken about the matter in a reasonable fashion and if they've flown off the handle and become, you know, uh, aggressive or shown conflict, You've done all that you can do. Brutal honesty is the last resort, but sometimes it's the only answer. And my final comment really is that remember, you are the chap in this situation. You're the gentleman. Always take the moral high ground. Never become aggressive, never swear, never shout, never make this situation, which could be quite modest in nature, turn into something which escalates into conflict or a feud or disdain between you and that other person. Make sure you're the person who's offering a solution, not just pointing out negativity. Problem solvers are much more loved in society than problem pointer outers. Remember that and you won't go far wrong. So I hope I've answered your question in how I personally deal with bad manners and individuals that I encounter in life who are less than they should be in their contribution to society. If you have enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, click the red button, and if you'd like to practically support the channel, don't forget you can buy me a coffee, and there are notes on how to buy me a coffee in the show notes below. So until the next time, make sure that you're exhibiting good manners all the time. I will be listening. I will be making sure that you're not causing the problems. And if you are, I will be employing one of my three solutions to sort you out. Until the next time, take care. And I will see you again very soon.